So essentially, I looked at it, what actually is law in the sense of enforceability? Uh, and law in the sense, okay, we used to physical laws like gravity and stuff like that, okay? Uh, I.e., a cause has a reaction, a pre predictability, okay? So laws of nature. However, law in the sense of birthright or uh, an un unalienable right or inalienable right, if you know, sorry, law is the respective duties, rights, and obligations between the consenting parties. So law, as Lord Diplock said, we need access to free courts, to courts, public access to courts, and the first job is to establish the duties, rights, and obligations between the parties. So that's the first thing that should happen in every court case. Is there a lawful excuse to breach the other person's peace? So it's all very rational and sensible. And so uh, it goes through then the same thing like we've done earlier today. I, I don't want to go through it all because it's, you know, it's there. Every human's right to survival, i.e., we have the right to defend ourselves as we feel best uh, to do it. We have the absolute right to choose what we do with our body. And yesterday we discussed abortion. Abortion is probably the most complex issue with this. Uh, we've discussed with our mind how we deal with a loss of the mind. And abortion, uh, the only rational way to do that is the mom knows who she slept with, uh, or may know. She, there's a high probability the mom knows who the father is than the father, okay? Uh, and therefore, ultimately, it's a decision of the mom. It starts off as a joint decision of a, the, the masculine and feminine, and if there's a dispute, the overruling must go to the mother, because she's the one that goes through the work, and who am I to say whether her decisions right or wrong to abort a child. You know, there's so many factors, it's a personal decision, nothing to do with me or nothing to do with everybody else. It's not a political issue. We should not be wasting all of this time in public dealing with it. And so, whatever you do, if you want to smoke weed, if you want to do this, if you want to hang yourself, whatever, it's your choice. Go ahead and do it. Nobody has a right to stop you doing that. And nobody has the right to stop you causing yourself harm. How do we know that? You know, there are a lot of physical contact sports where the law accepts through consent. You can have yourself harm. <coughs> so how on earth does anybody think that can stop you from voluntarily harming yourself? It's all well covered in law. And na natural justice is uh, all courts. Uh, are meant to be courts of conscience, okay? They sell you this thing, no, we're not courts of morals, morals is conscience, we are courts of law, okay, i.e. procedure. <coughs> Remember, equity is fair, what do we feel is fair, and is there a just outcome? There's two parts of it. So, what they're describing is the justice system, yes. The justice system is a tick box. Have we done, have we done, have we done, have we done? Have we acted in accordance with the rules of what the court rules are? Okay? So when they say, and this is very well quoted, um, we're not courts of conscience or morality, we are courts of justice. And that is the first bullshit claim because Earl of Oxford case, 1615, so 400 and something years ago, we settled. Every court is a court of conscience. Equity prevails. Okay? So, utter rubbish. But it's got this drilled into so many people. So, what was that act? 1615. Earl of Oxford case, 1615. Okay? That's how you invoke equity. Equity is invoked when uh, anything goes against the conscience. And you can force the court, because lower courts are bound by higher court decisions, which is common law precedence, the judicial system that we have meant to have in this country. That means every single court must have equity. But if you don't stand on your right to equity, you don't give it, give it equity, which itself is causing harm. Okay.
So, um, the lawful authority of the independent judiciary. So, this is page 12. Um, basically, we went through and spent some time yesterday. The first promise is to govern. The second promise is the creation of an independent judiciary. The first promise creates governance. Second one, independent judiciary. Governments, therefore, cannot tell the judiciary what to do. The judiciary cannot tell governments what to do. Okay? Now, uh, we went through the, um, I mentioned the uh, Constitutional Reform Act 2003 to 2005. That separated, it finally separated the House of Lords, i.e. governance or parliament assembled, and moved total independence to the courts. The Lord Chancellors, uh, and in the courts, they've got this little, uh, okay, here, yeah, I'm Mr. Judge, okay, and there's a little thing above my head, yeah. coat of arms, okay, <coughs> that's the Queen in court. I'm the judge who's made my oath to the Queen, or King coming, okay, therefore the judge is the agent of the Queen to deliver the Queen's promise, and her promise is to deliver, cause justice uh, in, what is it? Will you to your power cause law and justice in mercy to be executed in all your judgments? So that's the job of the dude sitting on the bench. Mm -hmm. Law, we <coughs> looked at and said, law is our birthright. So, uh, that goes through the Act of Settlement 1700. Now, firstly, the, they made the oath the, to the monarch through the crown, and the crown keeps an eye through because there's spy cameras in all of these coat of arms. And uh, the oath is to cause law, and therefore there's an obligation to serve the monarch to uphold law and they affirm in their votes, I will act according to law. So that is the contract with the people. That's what we expect, or we will be demanding, we get now when we go into court. Not whatever they want to do. Okay, We need to hold them to account to it. So the people have been asking the court judges like that, you know, are you acting under your oath? Okay, you know, you sitting on this chair, okay? Of course I'm freaking about acting under my oath. What do you think I am? I'm a judge. Okay? So, uh, but they get pissed off because they've got this aloofness and... Well, why don't they admit it then? Because that, why don't they just simply say yes? Correct. Why? Because it goes against their conscience. They know what they're doing is not right. Mm -hmm. Okay? And therefore, we've got to force them into acting under their oath. And so, uh, and, and so this is something that we've really been learning with going into the courts recently. So last time, last week in the council tax uh, thing with Lance, basically we gave judicial notice to the bench of the Bill of Rights, Coronation Oath Act, and um, uh, Act of Settlement. Okay, because that's all of our primary argument about no lawful cause of action. Uh, and what happened basically, they ignored us. So, why did they ignore us? Is it because we lay litigants, we lay people, and we're not officers of the court? And it's up to the officer of the court, the clerk, to say to the bench what they interpret the law to be. Okay, so we judicially noticed the bench. So what we're doing now, the next time we're going to court, what we're going to do is judicially notice the clerk and say, Clerk, can you confirm to the bench that the Bill of Rights is current statute law? And as you do that, are you giving them a copy? Of yeah, the Bill we of give rights? them a copy. A simple yes, no question. Can you confirm to the bench? Yes, Your Honours, the Bill of Rights is current statute law. Okay, and this way, through the officer of the court, the bench now must listen to it. Maybe that's the solution, I don't know. Okay? But do you see how it may have helped us? Yeah. 
Okay, so basically we did that for the first of all three. Can we confirm to the bench the coronation oath act is current statute law? Yes or no? And if they don't answer the question, can you please verify now, go into legislation.gov and confirm, because you have an obligation to put that in the correct law. Can you do that now? So we're forcing the court to do their job is what we're trying to do. And that's called moving the court. Okay. Um, so basically from what we've learned with all this council tax stuff is, and this will apply everywhere else, okay, with all cases. If we're doing it as lay people, why are they not listening? Now when you go through a solicitor or a barrister, forget it, they're not going to do anything like this. They're not there for your interest. They're there just, you know, to get my paycheck. Yeah. If you have a district judge, then you can't go through that process because you can't ask the judge. Can. You can. You, and this is the thing. The bench is neutral. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's a district judge or a high court judge or a magistrate. They're a neutral party to look at the evidence brought before them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, what we do is, there's a district judge. We still go, Clark. Can you confirm? to the bench that this is current statute law. Oh. And if the just district judge interferes, we need to control that. <coughs> uh, hang on, here's your legal advisor, he needs to confirm to you. It's not up to you. Are you trying to, are you here representing the other side? That's bias, that's contempt of court. Okay, so we've got to control them mm -hmm. and try and find ways of forcing them to do it. And they'll threaten you with contempt of court and all sorts. Mm -hmm. But we've got to, we'll find a way to break through it. We will. There's no question about it. And so, uh, uh, everything comes down to the uh, evidence. So the jurisdiction, what is jurisdiction? People say, I stand under common law jurisdiction. I'm the living man. I'm the living woman. You know? What does jurisdiction mean? Quite simply, does the court have authority to resolve the dispute? That's what jurisdiction means. Okay? So, uh, jurisdiction, uh, in, uh, let me just see how I'm going to go through this. First. Okay, so basically, uh, in the courts, They've got a structure in order to allow specialist knowledge to be retained in a box. Okay, so you get divorce, you get family courts, you get intellectual property courts, you get trust courts, property courts, uh, employment tribunal courts, blah, 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 blah. And the idea behind it is rational. It's for efficiency. Instead of, uh, instead of having to reteach the judge about all of the different law every time there's a case, you just send them to the people where they've already got expertise in the matter. You know, it's like if you're going to have your house built, you go to a glazer for the window, you go to a brickies for getting the you go to a plumber for the plumber. You know, it's perfectly rational. But jurisdiction quite simply means, does the court have authority to settle the dispute before it? So, when you go in, if you try and bring a family matter into the magistrate's court, they'll redirect you, go off to the uh, family court. Um, and same thing with all of the court structure. We'll look at the court structure shortly. Okay. And so jurisdiction is not, I'm the living man, I'm under God's law, I'm under this law, I'm under that law. Okay. It's about, can the court does it have authority to deal with the matter? So landlords and tenants, landlords, hands up. Right, have you had any landlord disputes? Okay, have you checked your leases? Okay, in your leases, where does it say you resolve disputes? Have a read. Have a read. I bet you it says Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors. No, it doesn't. Okay. Okay. The vast majority of leases say Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors.
So basically, if the parties do not go to that, I could argue uh, if you took me landlord tenant issue and my lease says Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors and you try and take me into the uh, uh, tribunal, okay? I'll say the tribunal's got no jurisdiction. Prove it. Here, yeah, my lease says Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors. Both of the leases of the properties we got say Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors. So what should happen is the dispute should first be brought to Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors. They may rule and say, Jesus, we're not interested in this crap. Go to the tribunal. Okay? So that's jurisdiction. Do we have authority to act? Okay? Basically, it's become common practice or custom that, yeah, RICS don't even question this. But they used to have that privilege. That privilege is become custom now just to go straight to the tribunal. So, do you have a clear understanding with jurisdiction and what's the difference? <coughs> when you, people are saying, I'm on common law jurisdiction, what are they saying in substance? What they're saying in substance is, the rules of their interaction on our respective duties and rights are created by the common law. <coughs> So, there's not such a thing as common law jurisdiction. I can't invoke common law when I walk into the court. The common law is what I'm standing on for my rights, to support my believed rights. And when the common law is not sufficient, then I'm standing under the rules of equity, under the Earl of Oxford case which says, if the common law is not fair and just, I argue lawful excuse from the existing common law judgment under the rules of equity, and the court is obliged, it must, follow the rules of equity because the jurisprudence of the common law system is you, a lower court, do what has been decided before you by a higher court. So again, we're forcing the court to uphold the rules. Okay? Again, back to this, if you do not stand on your rights, you have none. Okay? They are knowingly causing harm by not keeping the peace. They have an obligation to do that. And they are making money out of you as a result of that. Okay. So who's doing this? The courts, the councils? Courts, councils, everybody, <coughs> anybody. Okay? And this is why, let's go back to the basics, the foundation. Everything is a breach of peace. A breach of peace means you cannot knowingly cause another harm. Once you've been put with the knowledge that your actions are causing harm, or a reasonable person can see, it's self-evident to a reasonable person that your actions are causing harm, then you're guilty of fraud. Okay? However, we've been accustomed, the Queen said, I'll govern you to your laws and your customs, <coughs> we've been accustomed to tolerating this nonsense. Yeah. We are the problem. Yeah. We need to grow up. <laughs> We need to start holding them to account. We need to accept that we have let them go and get away with this nonsense. We are the solution. Stop blaming them. That's what kids do. So if the Queen um, agreed to rules according to our customs, yeah. and it's been the custom that we allow this to happen, yeah. doesn't the first person who dissents against it, they're not going against the custom? Yeah. Because the law is above custom. Okay, thank you. And um, somebody said to me the custom, basically, what the word custom means in, in law. I need to look this up, I don't know. Basically means something prior to living memory. <coughs> which would make sense. Uh, but customs, customs are changed. Okay. Whereas the law actually is very scientific, it's been derived through logic and applying scientific principles of evidence and applying logic and evidence. So law is not something that's rational. Law actually is extremely scientific because you're searching for the highest truth based upon evidence. So, and so jurisdiction, 
hopefully people are clear now. Admiralty jurisdiction, you go to an admiralty court and they deal with it there because they have authority to resolve admiralty disputes. Family jurisdiction means you go to a family court to resolve family matters. They have jurisdiction to dis uh, resolve family disputes. So are people clear yeah. what jurisdiction means? And why when people stand up in front of the court, oh, I stand under common law jurisdiction, you're a bloody idiot, you don't know what you're talking about. Okay. However, the court should then explain to them in simple terms. Yeah. It's their obligation. They must use simple language that anybody can understand, especially the person before them. They have an obligation to explain this to you. Okay. So, uh, uh, the point really being, we don't want to walk into courts anymore looking like idiots. Okay? We've learned, we've taken responsibility, we now are starting to understand and we're learning how to hold you account. Okay? And, right, administrative courts. What's an administrative court? So that's page, I'm not going through the pages, okay, but if you want to go further, page 17. Okay? An administrative court is defined as a court or a decision of the court where the mind has not been applied to the evidence. Okay? So basically, somebody puts a piece of paper of stamp. Okay? It's not a court of law. Okay? Now, this goes back to justice. What is justice? Justice is the process of administering law. Okay? So, justice is the system, the ticks box. Do this, then do that, then do that, then do that. Okay? So, there's no law involved in simply just doing this, because what it says is, do this, read it, comprehend it, apply your mind. Yeah. By your mind, no. Okay. So is it fair to say then that ma magistrates' courts at least can be both administrative they are and administrative public. courts. Mm -hmm. But is there a time when the magistrates' court is trying a crime where they do apply the mind or, or they never do? Okay, it depends on the cause of action. Okay, victimless crime there is no such thing, it's oxymoron. So administration. It's administration. Uh, if there's actually a victim, yes, then they'll apply the law. So they can be both, depending on the case. Yeah, yeah. Um, so any administrative court is unlawful. So basically, remember I was saying about the separation of the judiciary from governance and parliament? <laughs> Okay. This one is so important for people to understand. The Parliament has created legislation about the judiciary. <coughs> By the judiciary following that legislation, are they independent? No. no. So, the problem with this is, some of the stuff that Parliament puts out is pretty good. So the Senior Courts Act, uh, 1981, Section 49 says, in the Senior Courts, you must apply equity. Mm -hmm. And in the County Court Act, 1984, it says the same thing, you must apply equity. Okay? However, in the Magistrates Court Act, it says something different. It says nothing about equity, and it says, you must apply Acts of Parliament. Mm -hmm. So, by them applying Acts of Parliament, they are admitting to be an unlawful administrative court. Yeah. Therefore, everything that comes out of that is void. Because it has no lawful authority. So, if you've already had a liability order, because we didn't, I didn't know how to follow all of this, yeah. I can then sort of like spin it round and say, I believe this liability order is void, can I please have it removed? Therefore, under section, your powers under section 142, I give you the opportunity to correct your mistake. So if you've already had a liability order, 
Yeah, it's more fortuitous. It's, it's in the manual. In, in the magistrate's court. We'll be talking about some of this stuff in more detail. Okay, thank you. So, so basically, uh, just continuing on with this, we first give them an opportunity to remedy. The question then is, what do we do thereafter? Okay, and we can go a year and a half down the road and be in the same shit, uh, and nothing progresses. So we need to find a new solution. It doesn't work. Okay? People have been trying this Freeman of the Land stuff for decades. Look, a year and a half of trying to appeal <coughs> doesn't work. The evidence shows me now already it doesn't work. Therefore, we must change what we're doing. Mm -hmm. okay? So liability or the example, I've put in the section 142 with the facts. And this is what we're doing with the council tax stuff. Uh, we're gathering the evidence. We put the facts, we put it back to them. And section 142 is, uh, hang on a second, uh, is not barred by time limits. Okay? Whereas the appeal process is barred by time limits. And if you miss the time limit, then they use that as an excuse not to continue and give you the right to appeal. Okay? But equity should supersede that decision. And it, and it does, because when you put in an appeal, one of the sections is, are you out of time? If you're out of time, give us a reasonable excuse. Equity. So, everywhere you look, equity is there. Okay? So, the question then becomes, they're obviously not going to be in the case because, oh my God, just imagine how much money they're going to lose if they stop this council tax stuff going through there. All those people losing their jobs and money and all of this stuff. Um, so, once we've given them the opportunity to remedy, guess what that is? It's time to We can then give them a second and a third opportunity, and then we've got the evidence to go to trial by jury of an indictable offence before a jury in the high court, a jury in the private criminal prosecution process. That's where our remedy lies. So, what we're taking a private criminal prosecution is the judge for not responding to when, Depending on the evidence, okay? So basically what happened with Lance's council tax case, the bench was advised by the clerk, in accordance with section 34.6, you need to consider whether you are satisfied the sum has become payable, uh, has not been paid by the defendant. Okay, so here as the magistrate, my job is to get legal advice from the legal advisor. That's wrong. Uh, it's beyond before the evidence presented before me. Okay? Uh, and so, at a guess, they would sit and argue and say, hang on, you're a layperson, what do you know about the law? The legal advisor has advised me to say, I've granted the liability order because I'm satisfied with some of the payable. So, therefore, the judge is off the hook. We can't do anything against the judge. Okay? However, if we force the legal advisor to say the Bill of Rights is standing, the Act of Settlement is standing, and the Coronation Oath Act is standing, now they've got a problem. Because now they need to answer. According to the constitutional authority, is this legal? The council tax. So now, if the magistrates fail to address that evidence, then they're acting in breach of their duties and then we can go for the magistrate. And also, with Lance's case, we no judicially noticed the court. The legal advisor failed to direct the court what to do with that information. Therefore, we can go after the legal advisor failing in their obligation to direct the court. Yeah? I just wanted to say about council tax. Um, I've heard, I haven't done it myself, but I'm going to attempt to do it. Um, and I've heard lots of people having success with it, lots being like 30, 40, 50. Nobody has success with it. Well, you don't know what I'm going to say yet. <laughs> Nobody has success with council tax. What, <coughs> what I'm saying is um, there's apparently um, rules handed down by government of what percentage of all the council's budget is basically spent on like homelessness, this and that, and da, da, da. Yeah. 
And apparently Ellie Bray joined them. And you literally, on each council's website, there's a thing that if they spend more than 500 quid, they have to like account for it. So if you scour through that, which probably take yeah. ages. And, and, and this you is... Go, they've written sorry. to the valuations of this agency, and then their property's been entirely removed from the register. Yeah. Yeah. So through the courts, court, nobody's won it. That. But if, if people have done that, then surely they should share that. <laughs> and then like... You know, not only, okay, not only yeah. should they share that, okay, we, we had bailiffs called off because there was no liability order and yeah. we noticed them, okay. Uh, hang on a second. Yeah. Uh, and uh, basically Marston's confirmed in writing that they've sent the files back to the council. Now the council's with that knowledge, so the corporate, the legal fiction is with the knowledge of this can't enforce it because they can't show liability order or warrant of possession or control. Mm. Therefore, the file has gone back. Now, under the common law equal treatment and fairness tort, all of the files should have been handed back because the legal fiction is with the knowledge, yes. okay, and you are all agents of the legal fiction, therefore you all now need to send it back. Yeah. That's how it should work. This stuff. Mm. Okay? <coughs> now, what you're talking about is the question of reasonableness. Okay, the biggest problem we've had with the council tax withholding program is guess <coughs> what? Who's going to collect the rubbish? Mm -hmm. Seriously, that's the biggest criticism we've had. <laughs> Nobody's questioned the legal arguments and lawful arguments. Okay, or whether the courts are actually doing their job or not doing their job. Who's going to collect the rubbish? Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically, as a landlady, you're familiar with communal charges, yeah? Therefore, what are communal charges? In effect, what you've got is the council, as a trustee as much as a landlord is, of the communal charges where each individual leaseholder puts money in towards the communal charges. And what you do is, as the landlord, you prepare a budget. This is what I'm expecting to spend on these different things, except we have a right, then, to say, is this fair and reasonable? What are they actually putting in there and actually spending? And that's what is what needs to be applied to the councils. So, uh, because it's a public body and using public money, um, automatically they are trustees of the public money. And just like the landlord, you need to hold the, uh, the uh, service charges in it trust account okay? because you are the trustee and you need to account for that and if there's anything missing you are liable for that mm -hmm. so that there is really the truth of what it is okay? mm -hmm. and so as trustees we can always hold them to account hence the problem is yes I can cook books I'm great mm -hmm. at accounting I've done that for many years as well in between and I can make any correct account say whatever you want me to say and I'll get them so we need people with that knowledge, like Rowan suggested about the DZARs, about these cameras, we need people to set up subgroups to get a format whereby we address this. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah. Just wanted to say, in one of my cases, I don't have a council tax, but I have business rates, which I don't pay on a couple of property, and it's 80 grand on one of them, they're chasing it. Uh, when I went to the court, they had a chair at the bench, and I threatened the judge or the bench, if you do issue the liability order, which you threaten me to, make sure you've got a backup paperwork to back it because I'm going to sue your ass. <laughs> and that was over three months ago and I know the fucking was fine. <coughs> okay? Okay. Now we've all got different styles, colours. <laughs> 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 But it takes all sorts. Okay, I'm very. It's about substance, not <coughs> Correct. It's about substance, not <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so Calvin's kicked the door when the judge and the court wouldn't let him out of the court until they let him out. Mm. Not something that I would do, but. I threatened to, to call know. the cops to have the judge arrested for false yeah. imprisonment when they locked the door, locked me in the courtroom. Yeah. <laughs> so I was kicking the door in front of the security guard. Yeah. <laughs> I said to him, you let me out. And he goes, let him out. I said, you 